Using Google Drive and Google Classroom makes it really easy to create documents and presentations that you can share with your teachers. You can use your Google account to access your documents from anywhere. So you could start a document in school and then go home and finish it for homework. Your teachers can even add comments to your documents, just like they would in your exercise books. So let's start by looking at... Oh, hang on. I've got a video message coming in. Oh, it's Ada. She's just started secondary school. I wonder what she wants. Hi, Ada. What's up? Hey, Mr. J. I've just found out I'll be using Google Drive and Google Classroom at my new school. That's great. I use them with my students all the time. Have you used them before? Um, no, actually that's why I'm calling. I've been set some homework on Google Classroom and I'm supposed to make a Google Doc or a slide or something. My art teacher says she's invited me to her Google Classroom and my French teacher's given me a special code. But I've no idea what to do with it. It seems really complicated. Can you help? Yeah, absolutely. I'm doing a video on that right now actually and you've just given me a great idea. Why don't I show Ada how it all works and you can follow along with us? Have you got your login details? I had to choose a password at school, but how do I use it at home? Don't worry, it's easy. Go to your computer and we'll get stuck in. That's great. Thanks, Mr J. You'll be given your login details in your first week at school, probably in your IT lesson. OK, what do I do? OK, Ada, I can see you're on the sign-in screen at the moment. Click that blue button in the corner and sign in using your school email address and password. You can also use your email address to sign up for other accounts online. Things like Scratch, for example. And there are some websites where you can just sign in using your Google account. Look for the sign in with Google button and you can be signed in with just a couple of clicks. But remember to only use your Google account to sign up for school stuff. OK Ada, you're all signed in. Go ahead and click the Google Apps icon in the corner. That's the one with all the little squares. This window shows you all of the different Google Apps. I didn't realise there'd be so many apps. Do I need to learn all of them? I know it seems like a lot, but you won't actually be using most of these. Let me show you the important ones. So as Ada pointed out, there are a lot of Google Apps in this window, but you can ignore most of them. There's just a handful that you need to know about. These apps are for creating different types of documents, and I'm going to talk about each of them in a minute. But the thing is, you can access these four apps from inside Google Drive. So really, there are only three apps that you need to know about. This is Gmail. It's your email account. You can use Gmail to send and receive emails, and you can attach files too. But it's important to only use it for school stuff, like asking a friend for help with a project, or messaging a teacher about homework. Hi sir, I'm really struggling with this week's homework. Could I have another day to complete it, please? This is Google Drive. Most of the other apps are linked to Google Drive in some way, and you'll be using it a lot. It's basically an online space where you can create and upload documents and files. You can then easily access your files on other devices, like your home laptop or even a smartphone. You can also share files with other people and even work together on the same document. This is great for group work. Let's just quickly go over some of the different documents that you can create. Take a look at the four different files on the screen. These can all be created inside Google Drive. Google Docs is useful when you need to type lots of text onto an A4 page. So things like stories, reports and essays. This is Google Slides. It's used to make presentations, but it's also great for any piece of work where you need to mix images and text, like a simple poster. Google Sheets is used to create spreadsheets. It's great for storing data and doing calculations. You could use it, for example, to calculate profits for a business project. And then there's Google Forms. You can use this to create surveys and questionnaires. Great for carrying out research or getting feedback on something. You can then email your form to people to fill in. Your teacher can also use forms to create tests and quizzes. And finally, we have Google Classroom. This is an online space where your teachers can set classwork and homework. And this usually involves working with the different documents that I've just mentioned. Docs, slides, sheets, and forms. 
I'll be helping Ada to get this all set up in just a few minutes, so don't go anywhere. OK, Ada, let's dive into Google Drive first and have a go at creating some different documents, and then we'll look at Google Classroom. Sound good? Yep, ready when you are. OK, Ada, go ahead and click the Google Drive icon. So right now, your Google Drive is empty. Let's put something in there. Can you click the big New button at the top left of the screen? I can see the different types of document. Shall I make one? We will, but first, it's a good idea to get nice and organised. So let's start by making some folders. Can you click the folder icon and make a folder called Homework? OK, great, but Homework should be one word and it would be better if it started with a capital letter. Oh, OK, how do I rename it? Well, you can either right click the folder and choose Rename or you can use the really simple keyboard shortcut. What's that? Well, make sure the folder's selected. The fact that it's blue with that outline around it tells you that it is. Just press N on the keyboard. N for name? There. OK, what's next? Now make another folder called My Stuff. Perfect. Now in school, you're probably going to want to make lots more folders for subjects, projects, coursework. It's really up to you how you organise your files. What matters is that you do organise them. Don't just leave your files littered everywhere. Make sure everything is in a folder. OK, go ahead and open up that My Stuff folder. Just double click it. Can you see how it now says My Stuff at the top next to My Drive? That's how you know which folder you're in. Great. OK, hit the new button again, and this time, look for the one that says Google Slides. That's it. Go ahead and click. Have you used PowerPoint before? Yes, I used it at primary school. This looks a lot simpler, though. That's right. Now let's go ahead and create a simple presentation about something. Pick a topic. Um, I'm really into anime. How about that? Perfect. Go ahead and type anime into the title box on the first slide. Now go back to the Google Drive tab. There's the presentation you created, but notice how it's untitled. Now I see lots of students with drives full of untitled documents. It takes them ages to find stuff and it's just a really bad habit. So let's stay organised. Head back to Slides and we'll give your presentation a name. Can you see where it says Untitled Presentation at the top? Yeah. I've got a really good tip for you here. Because you've already typed the title on the first slide, watch what happens when you click to name the presentation. Neat! It copied the title for me. Yep. Now let's add a second slide. I think I can do that. It's the plus button up here, right? That's right, but if you click the little drop-down arrow next to it instead, you can actually pick a specific layout. OK. Which one should I choose? Let's go for one column text. This is a great layout to choose if you want to put an image on one side and then write about it on the other. Put the title of your favourite anime in the title box and then we'll look for an image. OK. I, I like lots, but let's go for Naruto. Now go to Insert on the menu at the top and choose Image Search the Web. OK. Find an image and drag it in. OK, this will do. Perfect. Now we'll customise it and add some text. Can you see the Explore button at the bottom of the page? Yep. Click it and then see if you like any of the suggested layouts. Oh, this one looks really good. Cool. Now use that search box in the Explore panel to research some facts about Naruto. You could do this in a new tab if you wanted a more detailed search, but this will do for now. Now use the text box to note down a few things about Naruto, but don't copy and paste. Copying and pasting is a really bad habit, and it can get you into lots of trouble when it comes to coursework. Instead, read the text, pick out some important bits of information, and type it out in your own words. Let's see how Ada's getting on. Oh, nice work, Ada. 
You do have a spelling mistake though. That little red squiggly line is telling you that Japanese is spelt wrong. If you right click it, Google will help you to fix it. Okay, so that was just a brief introduction to slides. Go ahead and close that tab. Do I need to save it first? Good question. All the Google apps actually save your work automatically whenever you make a change, so you never have to worry about saving or losing your work. Okay, let's imagine that the presentation you just made is actually a piece of art homework. Let's move it into the homework folder. Can you see the little arrow next to my drive in the sidebar on the left? This one? That's it. Click it. That's another way to show all of your folders. Now drag your anime presentation from the main window into the homework folder in the sidebar. That's it. You just moved your presentation to your homework folder. Nice and organized. Let's have a look at Google Docs now. Click that new button again and make a Google Doc this time. Put the title Google Apps on the first line and then click to name the document. Will it copy it again? Neat! Should I underline the title and make it bigger? Good thinking, Ada, but actually there's a better way to create titles and headings. Make sure you're on the first line. It doesn't have to be highlighted, just anywhere on that first line. Now look for where it says Normal Text on the toolbar. These are paragraph styles. Try changing it to title. Great, now go to the end of the line and hit the return key. This time, type Google Slides. That's it. Now change the paragraph style of this line to heading one. Go on to the next line and just type a few things that you've learned about Google Slides. Okay. Um, Google Slides is like PowerPoint. It's used to make presentations. You can type text and add images. There's an explore button that helps you to customize the layout and lets you search the internet. That's it. On to the next line and add a second heading one that says Google Docs. Then add a quick sentence or two about Google Docs. Google Docs is like Word. You use it to type documents with lots of text like stories, letters and essays. You can use paragraph styles to create titles and headings. Excellent, that'll do. Now close the tab and you'll see your new Google Doc in Google Drive. OK, Ada, that was just a quick introduction to Google Drive. You did great. Now let's have a look at Google Classroom. Still with me? If you manage to follow along so far, then you'll have no problem at all with Google Classroom. Let's help Ada to join some classes and take a look at the work that she's been set. Now Ada received an invitation from her art teacher and a code from her French teacher. So you'll get to see both ways of joining. But don't worry, it's really simple. Okay then Ada. All set Mr J. Go ahead and open Google Classroom using the Google Apps icon in Google Drive. So you've already got a class waiting to be joined. That's because your art teacher sent you an invitation. You'll also have an email in your inbox with this invitation, but all you need to do is click the blue button to join. That's it, you just joined your art teacher's classroom. Wow, that was easy. Now let's go ahead and join your French class using the code from your teacher. Hit the back button to go back to the previous page. All you have to do is click the Join Class button. That's the big plus next to the app icon at the top. Type in the code from your teacher and click the Join button. OK, hit the back button again. So at the moment, you've only got two classes, but you'll probably end up with a class for every subject. You might even have other classes for things like student groups or clubs that you join. OK, let's see what work you've been set. Click on your art class to open it. This is the stream for your class. When your teacher sets an assignment, it appears here. 
Your teacher can also use the stream to post messages to the class, and you can reply too. If you just want to see the work that you've been set though, you can click the Classwork tab at the top. Go ahead, Ada. Looks like I have an assignment. Click the task, and then click View Assignment. Create a slide about your favourite style of art. Include an image and the name of an artist. Haven't I just done that? Well, that's a bit of luck. Let's attach the anime presentation you just made. Click the Add or Create button and choose Google Drive. This tab shows your recent files, which is usually all you need, but you can also go to the My Drive tab to look through your folders or use the search box. Double click your anime presentation to attach it to your assignment. OK, you're all set. Click Hand In to submit your work. Always make sure that you've followed your teacher's instructions and check that any documents are attached before you click the Hand In button. I've lost count of the number of times I've had assignments handed in with no work attached. Great, now let's see if you have any French work to do. Use the hamburger icon to open the sidebar. Hang on, did you say hamburger? Yep, that icon with the three lines it's called a hamburger. Click it and then go to your French class. Great, use the classwork tab again to look at your assignment. Les coulers. You might need to work on your pronunciation there, Ada. Open the assignment and let's see what you've got to do. Open the attached Google slide presentation and fill in all the colours in French. Then complete the self-assessment form. OK, so your French teacher has attached some documents. View the assignment and let's have a closer look. So it looks a little different. There's a form to fill in this time. And if you look at your work in the corner, you can see that your teacher has provided a Google Slide presentation for you. So there's no need to make one and attach it like you did for your artwork. OK then, open up the Google Slide and get stuck in. OK, Ada's all done with her French homework. The presentation is already attached to the assignment, so Ada doesn't need to do anything else with it. Shall we have a look at the form? OK. Looks pretty straightforward. What do you think? I thought it was pretty easy. Just glad I didn't have to read them out. Great. Make your choice and click Submit. Now that was a pretty basic form, but remember your teacher can use Google Forms to create tests and quizzes too, in which case you'll usually get a score at the end. Okay, nice work Ada. Don't forget to head back to Google Classroom and submit your work. Okay Ada, I've just got one more thing to show you. Can you head back to the Google Drive tab? Notice you now have a Classroom folder. Inside, you'll find a folder for each of the classes that you've joined in Google Classroom. Open the French folder. When your teacher attaches a file to an assignment, this is where it's stored. Try opening it. The presentation is now view only, which means you can look at it, but you can't edit it. That's because it's been handed in, remember? so you won't be able to edit it again until your teacher returns it. So, still think it's confusing? No, I get it now. Thanks for your help, Mr J. No problem, Ada. See ya. Bye! And there you go. Everything you need to know to get started with Google Drive and Google Classroom in school. See ya!